What is up everyone? My name's Damien. Welcome back to another video. Yes, I have stuck my phone to my window just so I can be standing up because everyone who knows me in real life knows that I'm very dramatic. So anyway, I know it's been a while since I recorded a video and posted it. It's mainly just because I haven't had enough forks because you know this whole quarantine thing and I've had to do basically all my schoolwork at home. Haven't had a lot of time. Animal Crossing exists as well, so yeah. But I'm gonna be trying to make some more videos when I can. Of course, mental health always should always be first in my opinion. Okay, but anyway, you're here for the title of the video. I get it, the light shit. I've been trying to fix it for like the past five minutes. Don't have the time to fix it. We're just gonna have to deal with it. Um, but today we're gonna be talking about I really do want to fix the lighting though, because you cannot see me. For those that don't know, oh my god, why do I keep looking so fucking white? For those that don't know, a trans med is basically someone who believes you have to have gender dysphoria to be trans. There we go. I'm gonna cry now. The thing is, this has kind of cultivated a group division between the community. The reason is, is that there's a lot of different interpretations of what gender dysphoria actually is. Basically, most trans meds describe it as an intense depression, anxiety, or hatred for your body based on what you were born as. Some trans meds. The issue is, one of the issues I have is that they can't stick to the same story. Like, it changes for person per, per, per person. But then they go ahead and say, it's we are a very simple group. We only have one definition as opposed to you guys that have million different genders and it's just like You don't though Everyone's experience with dysphoria is different. So trying to describe it in one way based on your own experience Doesn't work and that's really like my main issue is that they're trying to Put something into a box that's very wide I'm not talking about the trans community in general, because saying trans community is already its own box. The thing with it is that dysphoria, gender dysphoria, first of all, not required to be trans, and that's a medical fact, and we'll get to that in a second. But two, it has such a variety of ways of showing up. Sometimes it's based on physical attributes, sometimes it's just based on, like, non-physical things, you know, like someone's voice, per se. But also, people feel it in different ways. Some people realize it when they're really young. Some people realize it when they're really old. Some people realize as soon as puberty starts. Some people don't realize until after puberty is basically really set in. The thing is trying this idea that it's an immense hatred. A lot of people then would get confused. Just like, yeah, but you came out before puberty when those things didn't start happening, how can you be dysphoric because it's caused by puberty or other way around? You came out after puberty had already stopped, you should have realized it was dysphoria sooner, so... But also this weird definition of dysphoria really doesn't work half the time. I've seen- I used to be a trans med, I used to be in the community. The thing is, I was very stubborn about not going and calling random people trenders. Just not really my thing. But my time in the community means that I've seen a lot of people go after people they would call, you know, trans trenders. And I can tell you, most of the time, it's just someone who doesn't fit their standard. Say, one of the people they really don't like is Ash and Daniel. For, first of all, he's non-binary, he's gay, and he's trans. But also, he likes makeup and being gender non-conforming. So, one thing you'll notice that if a trans man or someone who cl claims to be wears makeup, they'll say, no, you're wearing makeup, that makes me dysphoric. And that's the real issue, is that they really, a lot of them can't seem to separate what makes someone trans from their own personal experiences. And you know what, I kind of get that in the way of, we can never truly understand how someone else of a different group or just someone else in general is feeling. I will never understand the oppression of people of color all around the world because I'm white, but just because I can't understand it doesn't mean I suddenly can't respect the struggles they go through or realize that 
they are real struggles because they are real, but because they don't affect me, I don't really understand them. The same thing works here. People in the trans med community cannot understand, for the most part, how someone could be trans if they're not being trans exactly like they are. Anyway, that's like the big issue is that the main thing they try and say is very simple to define and not what anti true scum think trans should be defined by. The thing is that it's not, and it's a very personal thing that they're trying to define it by. And because of how varied, how varied these personal things can be, it doesn't really work. Another issue that I have is the no true true scum thing. When you're in it for a while, you know there's a ton of horrible transmits that say horrible things. Even if somebody has a diagnosis of gender dysphoria, they will keep on saying, no, you're lying, you're a trender, you're gonna regret everything because I don't think you're trans. Saying a lot of nasty things to people who are trans. The issue comes when you when people try to call them out. Just like, hey, this person's really bad. Why aren't you lot doing anything about it? They'll usually be like, oh, they're not a true trans med, so that's not at all how you should be doing. They are literally defining themselves as true scum and trans meds. They are defining themselves as part of your community. You can't say, oh, well, they're not a real one like we are. Like, anyone that's been watching me knows that I don't believe a whole community should be at fault for one bad person. Everyone in the community shouldn't have to apologize for one person being bad. But in this case, typically the people being bad are following the ideology to a T. And also, people can say, hey, this person isn't good. Instead of saying this person isn't good, they're saying this person isn't really a part of us, so we can't say anything. When they are, they're not taking responsibility for the community and the community acting on things that is very prevalent in the community. Another thing, and the biggest thing that I don't like, is their medical inaccuracies. It's very annoying. Because the thing is, a lot of trans meds like to claim it is scientific fact. You have to have gender dysphoria to be trans. Having gender euphoria or gender incongruence in general is not enough. You have to feel negative about the sex you were born as. You have to feel negative, you have to feel depressed, because that's how you realize you're trans and then transition. They also say, oh, it's a medical fact, and if we try to change that medical fact, we won't be allowed to go get hormones, surgeries, and have them covered by insurance. Because if it's because if it's changed to where you don't need dysphoria, the medical system will stop helping us, and the trenders will ruin life for real trans people. That's not correct at all. For one, I think they're taking the 2011 edition of the DSM-5 for their idea that it is medical fact. The DSM-5, especially this one, the DSM-5 has been highly criticized all, from all over the world about not only their treatment of gender dysphoria or in, the, or in the thing itself, gender identity disorder, but other things such as autism and other conditions. Just because it's been written down in paper doesn't mean it's true, especially when many people have criticized it. But more specifically, not only has the trans community criticized it, but psychiatrists and the American Psychiatric Association have also criticized it for not being correct. When you look at any definition anywhere else other than the DSM-5, it says all you have to do is identify as another gender. It doesn't mean, it doesn't say you have to have dysphoria or hate yourself, hate your body, because identifying as another gender already means that your brain, your gender, is disconnected from this. It doesn't have to have hatred. Because of advocacy, we're seeing a lot more people realize, oh wait, I feel better like being referred to as this and that or like being seen as this or that. Like they'll, they're realizing it because of euphoria without even realizing that they're having dysphoria. And the thing that gets me is that they're saying it's scientific fact, which it's not. 
we still have a lot of research to do when it comes to transgender people. But for the most part, it's been seen to be the complete opposite, considering psychiatric organizations are even saying you do not need it to be trans. A lot of them experience it, but it's not necessary. The next thing that really annoys me, and you lot know it annoys me, is when they say, if it wasn't defined by that, then we wouldn't be able to get medical help, and we need to have medical gatekeeping to prevent fake people from ruining the name of trans people. It's just not true. If it's seen that certain people that express these qualities live a much happier life using HRT and surgeries, then it should be allowed insurance-wise without medical gatekeeping where you have to have dysphoria because it is medical gatekeeping. And most of these people saying this live in America where there actually isn't that much medical gatekeeping because there is informed consent. I live in Ireland. I am Irish. We don't have informed consent and it's a mess. We have to travel to the UK because nothing's been set up here. But even then, most of the waiting lists are two years long. And that's not even getting into it. In order to get a referral to get any of this done, you have to get a diagnosis for gender dysphoria doesn't sound so bad. The thing is, even if you came out over a year before that, you have to be seeing them for at least six months to get that diagnosis. Not only that, if you're autistic, it's even worse because then you have to go to them for a full year. And that's not just a full year of seeing, you know, medical professionals. It's a full year since they decided, oh yeah, we're going to look at you for this. It sucks. The waiting lists are too long. There's only two GPs in the entire country, and one of them is like really strict. It's really like you have to have, you have to be straight, you have to like follow the gender roles of your gender, and you have to have dysphoria. It's very strict. It takes a long time, and many people either go to different countries to get help or die waiting. That's a sad reality, and I think that's the thing that annoys me the most. A lot of the people that say, oh, it has to be this way, it's just fact. It's for the betterment of all trans people. They don't realize that it's not. It doesn't help anyone. The thing is, they also like to blame trans trenders for it being so hard to get hormones and surgery. It's not their fault. I'll tell you whose fault it is. It's transphobic medical systems. It's transphobic societies. We should not be blaming other people within the trans community. We should be fighting continuously for our rights to medical help instead of infighting. Because at the end of the day, that's what they want. They kind of want us to be so distracted fighting ourselves that we don't continue to get rights. So, for the love of God, if you're a trans med watching this, true scum, whatever you want to call yourself, uh, if you actually want to help the trans community, stop harassing innocent trans people that don't fit your standards, stop spreading medical misinformation, and actually fight for real medical advancements for trans people and medical rights. I've been Damien, I'm out, peace, I need to fix the lighting.